Hello everyone and welcome back to another anatomy tutorial. In this tutorial we will continue talking about the muscles of the neck and the shoulder girdle. In this tutorial we remove the foreign completely and so we can see the deep muscles of the neck and the deep muscles of the shoulder girdle. So as we did before let's go through the muscles which we are going to dissect and after that we can uh, move to the dissection. As you can see in this view, we remove the left uh, forelimb completely and uh, let's go through the muscles. So here highlighted in blue is the cervical part of the trapezius muscle. We moved it uh, dorsally so that we can see this muscle highlighted in green is the cervical part of the rhomboid muscle. The next muscle here is the splenius muscle. As we said before, the splenius muscle originates from the knuckle ligament, from the spinous processes of the first, you know, uh, three or four or five uh, thoracic vertebra and inserts to the head and to the cervical vertebra number one to number five, but not number two. The next muscle is the longissimus muscle. Longissimus muscle is a very long muscle start from the hip bone here from the coxal to porosity and extends uh, longitudinally and cranially and forms here in the lumbar region the lumbar part of the longissimus muscle or we can call it like longissimus lumborum. In the thoracic part here we have the longissimus thoracis and here in this area we have the longissimus surfaces or the cervical part of the longissimus muscle and under this muscle here uh, as we are going to dissect you know and see in the video there are two uh, other parts of the longissimus muscle this is the longissimus uh, we're talking about the longissimus atlantis and long longissimus capitis the next muscle here is the ventral serrate muscle. Ventral serrate muscle, as we described before, has two bars. The thoracic part here originates from the ribs and inserts to the serrated face of the scapula. And the next part is the cervical part of the ventral serrate muscle, originates from the transverse processes of the uh, cervical vertebra and inserts to the same area of the scapula, the serrated face. So this is the two parts of the serrate muscle. This muscle here is one of the inspiratory muscles uh, originate from the ribs as you can see here and inserts to the knuckle ligament and the spinous processes of the thoracic, the thoracic vertebra. This is the um, cranial uh, dorsal serrate muscle or you can name it as the dorsal muscle cranial part or the cranial part of the dorsal muscle or cranial cranio dorsal serrated muscle the next muscle highlighted in red here is the caudal dorsal serrate muscle or the, the the caudal part of the dorsal serrate muscle originates also from the ribs and serves to the thoracolumbar fascia and to the spinous processes as you can see here the main difference between these two muscles uh, is the direction of muscle fiber. So if you look at the cranial dorsal serrate muscle, you can see that the contraction of this muscle will move the ribs away from the midline and so this will increase the volume of the thoracic cavity and that's why it's one of the inspiratory muscles. Um, while here the caudal dorsal serrate muscle, uh, the contraction of this muscle will move the ribs toward the midline and that's why it's an uh, expiratory muscle. The next muscle we can see uh, here is the muscle which is located between the ribs. Here between the ribs we have two uh, layers of muscle. The external one, the outside one is the external intercostal muscle which is an inspiratory muscle under this one if you remove the external intercostal muscle we can find or we can see the internal intercostal muscle which is like a expiratory muscle here caudally from the ribs as you can see here to the linea alba and uh, to the inguinal ligament 
we can see this very big muscle is the external abdominal oblique muscle. And now let's move to uh, dissection. This is the cervical part of the trabezius muscle. Here cranially, superficially under the skin, we can see the cleidomastoid muscle, which is part of the brachiocephalic muscle. So this is the cleidomastoid muscle in the horse. Here we have the omotransversarius muscle. Omotransversarius muscle, as we say, originate from the transverse process of the cervical vertebra. Ventral to it, and more deeply here, we can see the omohyoid muscle. The omohyoid muscle inserts to the hyoid bone, as we described before. And uh, as we uh, mentioned uh, here in this area, this muscle is located between, exactly between the external jugular vein, this one, and more deeply on the other side, we have the common carotid artery and the vagothrombatic trunk. So it forms like a protection of this artery and nerve, you know, if we want to collect blood from the external jugular vein. So uh, to be able to remove the forelimb completely, there are a lot of muscles we have to cut as we can see here. One of them is the pectoral muscles. Pectoral muscles includes uh, the superficial pectoral muscle. This one here is the superficial pectoral muscle with two parts. And from here back, we have the deep pectoral muscle. This is the deep pectoral muscle. The superficial pectoral muscle has also two parts. This one here is the transverse pectoral muscle. And this one is the descending pectoral muscle. This part here. Superficial pectoral muscle originates from the sternum, cranial sternibra, and serves to the cranial surface of the humerus. Here we have the cervical part of the trapezius muscle. And here we have the thoracic part of the trapezius muscle. As we described before, both of them inserts to the spine of the scapula. As we said uh, before, to be able to remove the forelimb, one of the muscles which we have to cut in this area is the ventral serrate muscle. The ventral serrate muscle is a huge muscle as you can see here, divided into two parts. The first part here is the cervical part of the serratus ventralis or serrate muscle, originate from the transverse process of the cervical vertebra and inserts to the serrated face of the scapula. This is the second part, the thoracic part of the serratus ventralis, originate from the ribs to the serrated face of the scapula. Now, if we move the thoracic part of the trapezius muscle up, now here we can see the serratus dorsalis cranius or cranial part of the dorsal serrate muscle with a fiber direction uh, craniodorsally. Here originate from the ribs uh, to the spinous process of the thoracic vertebra. This muscle is one of the inspiratory muscles. More caudally here, we can see uh, the other part of the dorsal serrate muscle. This is the serratus dorsalis caudalis with a fiber direction uh, caudodorsally, caudodorsally. This muscle originates from the ribs to the spinous processes of the uh, thoracic vertebra and to the thoracolumbar fascia. And this muscle is one of the expiratory muscles. So now let's uh, move the ventral serrated muscle so that we can see the more deeper located muscles. This is the thoracic part of the ventral serrated muscle and this is the cervical part of the ventral serrated muscle. And now here we can see the iliocostalis muscle which has two parts. This one here is the thoracic part or we can name this muscle uh, iliocostalis thoracis, where in the lumbar region, of course, we have another one, the lumbar part. 
Now let's uh, move the cervical part of the trapezius muscle up. As you can see under the cervical part of the trapezius muscle, we can see the cervical part of the rhomboid muscle. This is the cervical part of the rhomboid muscle. Here in this area, we remove the thoracic part of the rhomboid muscle. Both of them inserts to the medial surface of the um, scapular cartilage. Under this muscle here in this area, we can see this very big muscle is the splenius muscle. The splenius muscle, as we described previously, originate from the spinous process of the vertebra, uh, thoracic vertebra and from the neck ligament and inserts to the skull and to the transverse processes of the cervical vertebra. Let's move it also up. The longissimus muscle is divided into uh, different parts, starting with the lumbar part of the longissimus muscle in the lumbar region, the thoracic, we have the thoracic part. Uh, to the neck area, we have uh, under the iliocostal muscle, as you can see here, we have the cervical part of the longissimus muscle, or we can name it as longissimus cervicis. Longissimus cervicis, as you can see there, inserts to the transverse processes of the cervical vertebra. This is all the longissimus cervicis. The other part of the longissimus muscle is this one here, is the longissimus atlantis. From the name, we can uh, know that this muscle inserts to the wing of the atlas in this area here, longissimus atlantis. More dorsally here, we have the last part of the longissimus muscle, which is the longissimus capitis. And from the name again, this muscle inserts to the occipital bone of the skull, the longissimus capitis, or the capital part of the longissimus muscle. Between the spinous processes and the transverse processes of the thoracic and lumbar uh, vertebra, in this area, in this angle, we can find the spinalis muscle. In this area of the neck, we can see this very good developed muscle in the horse, uh, the semispinalis capitis. This is the semispinalis capitis. The semispinalis capitis uh, inserts to the neck ligament there and to the skull. Under this muscle, there are some muscles of the spine, of course, small muscles we are going to cover in the next tutorials.